Hey everybody, my name is Nick Wolfram with JMZ Online. Today we're working on a set of FE Ford cylinder heads that we're going to be doing a valve job on. Um, these are just for a stock rebuild, so we're not doing anything special to them, uh, but we're going to be doing new guides, we're going to be putting all new intake and exhaust seats in, and we're going to be finishing them out um, and making these heads new again. So um, let's get started. So the first thing that I do before we get started is to magnaflex the heads and give them a thorough inspection to make sure they aren't cracked. It's never fun to get halfway or all the way through a valve job and realize that the heads are junk when you find a crack. So basically we've already gone through and we've cleaned the heads. Um, we do that using a combination of thermal cleaning and abrasive cleaning. Um, so basically these heads were baked in our bake oven um, and that bakes all of the grease and moisture out of them and that way we can run it through our steel abrader steel shot machine that basically goes through and you know gives us a real nice clean finish. Uh, the other thing we've already done is we've already removed the old guides. These did have um, guides installed from a previous valve job um, as well as on one of these heads we already have exhaust seats installed. I've actually gone through and installed the guides on this one already. Um, but like I said, some of these intake seats are really, really low. The exhaust seats aren't looking too hot anymore, so we're going to be installing all new seats on these. So now I'm going to be installing my new valve guides on this head. So I'm just going to brush out the old board, make sure it's clean. And I've been using this Goodson Press Fit lube lately, and it seems to do pretty well. So I'm in the process of installing our new guides and we're actually going with a 2000s oversized guide here um, because when we pressed the old ones out they came out pretty loose um, and we want to make sure that these have enough press that when they're installed they're not going to fall out later on. So I've sprayed some press fit lube in all of the bores on the head as well as coated the guides with the press fit lube. Just use my driver, get it, get it lined up, and press them in. So now I'm going to level up the head and I'm going to come down and trim the guides down. Um, they're a universal guide that fit a whole range of uh, cylinder heads so this one we actually have to trim them down a little bit. So here I'm using a diamond valve guide hone to hone the valve guides to the correct clearance. Some people ream the guides. Um, sometimes we'll ream the, ream the guides and then finish them with the diamond hone. Um, we find the hone gives us the most consistent results but it is the most time consuming and the messiest option. So on this head that I've got leveled up on the machine ready to cut the counterboards for the seats, you'll see that the exhaust seats are just the original casting from the factory. There's no seat actually in this head. And we're gonna be replacing both. We're gonna be actually putting in exhaust seats and intake seats. On this other head, they already have a seat from a previous valve job installed. So I'm gonna be using the welder here to weld around the, the circumference of the seats and that way I can pop those back out and we can install our new seats and start from scratch. So I've pressed a freeze plug into these so that once I weld around there I have something to drive on from the back side and pop those out of there and I'm just putting this freeze plug over the intake to try to keep any 
as much splatter as I can from uh, going in the intake port. Now we've got a bead of weld all the way around. Just so now the old seats are out. This is probably the easiest way to remove valve seats um, without any damage to the head. And now we'll clean up those counter bores and we'll find a seat that fits. And that way we can put our new seat in and get these heads finished up. The other way you can do it is by cutting them out using a seat cutter, um, but it's a little more labor intensive. It's probably the easiest way to do it that has the least amount of risk, um, but this weld trick works pretty well and we use it pretty often. So I've got our head set up here. This is the tooling that I'm gonna be using to cut the seat counter bores for both the intake and the exhaust. Um, I've got the correct cutter for the exhaust seat to start with. Uh, this is a Surti style. Uh, actually, this is a Surti pilot. Um, 30 counter, pocket counter bore cutters, um, but we've changed it over so that it has a tool holder that fits our TCM25, which is our older machine, but we find that it actually works quicker for cutting any anything on the guides and for cutting the seat counter bores. And then we use our 30 machine primarily for forming the seats um, and any of the finish work. Now I've got the cutter set up to do the intake seat counter bore. I like to run a little bit of lube on the pilot just to make sure everything smooth. So here you can see we've got the seat counter bores cut. So we're ready to pound in our new seats. So for driving in the seat, I've got my seat driver that's the right size for that seat. And that goes over a pilot in the head so that we can drive in the seat. I'm going to choose a different driver that's the right size for the exhaust seats. That one looks pretty good. Before I go all the way down, I'm just blowing out um, underneath it just to make sure that there's not any cuttings or anything underneath there. So now as you can see, we've got all of our seats in and we're ready to move over to the Surti. So now I've got the head up on the Surti, and this is the machine that we use to finish all of our valve seats. So we're going to be using a three angle cutting bit such as this one, 
that actually has the top angle, the seat angle, and the bottom angle all built into it. So it cuts all three angles at once. So basically what we're gonna do here on this machine is we wanna start by getting the head level. All it takes is leveling one, one of the guides. So I've got the dual axis rollover fixture on here right now. So what you're, you'll see here is I've got a pilot in one of the valve guides and I've got our level in here and as long as that bubble is well within the circle, we're plenty level and the, the machine, the cool thing about this machine is it has three different methods for centering. The first, when I hit this foot pedal, the entire head floats and that's how we start to get centered up on our guide and you'll see it here in a minute when I actually use the machine. The second floating uh, mechanism is another planar float that floats just the motor and the spindle. And basically that helps you get even closer center. It finds the true center of the valve guide even, uh, even closer and it's floating even less weight than the entire head. The last centering uh, feature this has is a spherical float. And let me just get this out of the way so I can show you for example. Once we're, we have our tool down in the guide, we'll turn both of these on and it'll float this entire spindle. And if there's any misalignment, it's gonna find the true axis of that valve guide as well as the true center with the two centering floats so that we get a perfectly concentric seat to the valve guide. Now, I already cut my seat angles on the other head uh, before this video. And on this head, You'll see here that like, for instance, um, on some of these seats, they don't quite match the port as well. Actually, this head is a lot better than the first head was, but especially on the, into, or on the exhaust uh, seats, they're actually a little bit bigger than, you know, to blend into the throat of the um, port. So I'm gonna go in with just an angle cutter here. Um, it's just a steep angle with the radius and I'm gonna blend that into the port. So here we float the head over and run the pilot down in the guide. And then I release the second planar and spherical floats. I then give it about six seconds to find its true center of the guide before locking down the floats and doing our machine. So now these exhaust ports blend really well with the seat um, once we get our seat angle on there. And I'm gonna go in and do the same thing on the intake even though it's not near as bad on this head as it was on the other head. Now making a cut like this, we have to run a pretty low RPM. A cut like this uses nearly the full face of the cutting bit so there is a lot of load on the tool and it'll tend to chatter at a higher RPM. now going through and cutting the intake seats and I've got this cutter set up so that our seat ends up at the right spot on the valve and you can see here kind of the red is where or the shiny part is where the seat is actually going to be seating on the valve. Um, the other thing as I've cut this I've put my valve in and I've measured our installed stem height and checked it against our specifications. And now I know that this seat is cut to the correct depth for our installed stem height to be within the specs for these heads. So at that point, I've now, there's a, a readout on here that I've set the depth and I've zeroed. So now when I go and cut the other three intake seats, I'm able to just run down to that same zero point and they'll all be at the same depth. You'll see here that I like to run the tool as fast as I possibly can without getting any chatter. On some materials, the faster you run, it'll chatter more, um, but these SBI valve seats machine very, very well. 
And so here I actually run the full 840 RPM that the SERTI goes to. My GoPro died, so I'm having to finish recording this on my phone, but so here we've got the intake seats cut. You see we have a real nice pretty finish when I put a valve in and turn on the vacuum gauge. So the gauge is over there. And I'll just put that over the port and you see it coming up. And I can tell this, is, this seat is pretty good. Um, I don't have any lube on the guide and we don't have a spring on there so it's not going to seal as good as it will when it's actually in operation and even right here we can see that that gauge is just leaking down very gradually so we have a real nice uh, seal on that seat. If I mentioned the cutter that I use had a 45 degree seat angle, uh, one and a half millimeter wide or 60 thousandths of an inch wide. Um, and it's got, I believe, a 30 degree top angle and a 60 degree bottom angle. And you can see it just looks real pretty here. On the exhaust cutter, we're going with the same idea, three angle cutter, um, but it's a 45 degree that is two millimeter or 80 thousandths of an inch wide. Now this will be kind of hard to show, but I want my exhaust tips the same, same uh, installed stem height. So I'm putting a straight edge I can't do it with one hand, but I'm putting a straight edge across all of my intake valves that are in here and checking against my exhaust valve to get an idea of how much more I need to cut. And I'm gonna say 10 thousandths more and we'll be equal with our intake stems. And at this point, that exhaust valve is now right in the ballpark with the rest of my intake valves. can see it's got all three angles there looks real nice and pretty and here's where the seat is actually contacting the valve and it's right in the middle of the valve face here um, that's what we like to do since this is a, um, a stock rebuild it's just gonna be right in the middle um, when you start getting into performance you'll push that clear out to the very edge of the valve but with this being a performance or this being a stock rebuild um, that's where I'm gonna keep it so at this point again I've got uh, my zero set on the 30 so now I can go through and cut the last three exhaust valves to the same depth and everything should be straight across so here's an up close look of cutting the exhaust seat and toward the end you start to hear a little bit of chatter try to come in and that's mainly because I didn't have both hands on the spindle feed because I was trying to record so I didn't have full control of the machine Finally, I'll drop a valve in and we'll do our vacuum checks again. 
That one's definitely good. That one's good. Whoops. Uh, this one has the port on the front that you gotta cover too. So I gotta cover up there for the crossover. That one's good. And that one's good. And that's that's with no grinding and no lapping at all. Um, these are brand new valves. These are sourced from Engine Pro. Um, we sell these valves, so if you want, contact us or go to our website and you can buy these valves. I mean, these look really pretty for, you know, being just a stock, uh, stock rebuild. This is going to be a really nice, uh, you know, long lasting valve job on these. Last thing I'm doing on these heads before we resurface, we're actually going to do resurface on the intake, the exhaust and the head gasket surface side. Uh, all three sides just to make them nice and smooth and flat. Um, but the last thing I'm doing, we have one bolt hole here that's a little bit rough, so I'm gonna be installing a helicoil. So I've got the head leveled up, and now I just gotta get in the helicoil kit and get the right drill bit and the tap. down just make sure that there weren't any chips keeping me from getting bottomed out completely and I'll grab a helicoil and now what we got to do is break the tang off take some air and blow it out so now we'll get the heads over on the resurfacing machine over there and get them resurfaced. So I've got the heads set up on the surfacer. We're going to be re resurfacing the intake side, the exhaust side, and the actual head gasket surface side. Um, so I've got them bolted together here right now so that we can do this in a little quicker process. Um, and we'll start with the exhaust surface. So here, I started with a 2000s pass, so what you saw me do is run down the cutter until it just barely skimmed this head, because this head is actually a little bit thicker than this one. Um, I mean, no two heads are gonna be exactly the same from the factory, and we don't know if these were resurfaced at a prior point um, by a different shop, but in this case, at this point, I've taken 2000s off, and you know, you can see, where it's shiny is where the cutter touched and where it's not shiny is where it hasn't touched. So obviously we need a little bit more here. So I took a 5,000th pass, so now we're at 7,000th total. And you can see we've got a pretty nice finish here. We've just got a couple of spots just like this right here that aren't cleaned up. But when we put the gasket on here, Get it roughly positioned you'll see that those spots that aren't cleaned up are within the sealing surface of the gasket so it's not going to matter so at this point just to get as nice of surface finish as i can i'm going to take another half or one thousandth uh, pass so that we can get these nice nice and smooth and flat because that's what you need for um, a steel gasket like this to really seal so here we've got a total of seven and a half thousandths of an inch off of the exhaust side here. And we've got a real nice pretty finish. Everything's cleaned up. So I'm gonna flip it over and do the intake side now. So I've got the heads flipped over to do the intake side now. And I'm gonna put some dicum on here just so that you guys have an idea, make it easier for the visual to see 
what this looks like when we surface this. So after a little real light pass, you can see here, you know, the blue is where we didn't touch, the shiny part is where we did touch. Um, and with this, you can see that the angles on these heads aren't always right, whether that be from the factory. Um, you know, during this era, there's a lot of kind of sketchy work that engines straight from the factory weren't machined correctly. Um, on top of that, these heads may have been surfaced before previously on someone else's machine, uh, you know, on a different setup or, you know, they might have done it incorrectly too. So at this point, um, what we're going to end up doing is we've already surfaced the exhaust surface. So now we're going to get the intake surface directly parallel with that exhaust surface, just like we want it to be. And at that point, when I take the two heads unbolted from each other, um, we're going to be able to bolt up to the intake surface and get the seal the gasket sealing surface for the head gasket at a perfect 90 de degree angle to the intake surface as it's supposed to be um, the other thing we have going on here is a little bit of you know possibly warping um, and all of that's going to be straightened out and these surfaces are going to be perfectly flat when we're done part of what we do in automotive remanufacturing is you know we have to work with what we've got and like I said, that could be, you know, incorrectly machined components from the factory. It could be incorrectly machined somewhere along the line, or it could just be damaged and warped from the years of miles. And that's why when we first started, I set up off of the intake surface of these heads because I knew that that was probably the best surface um, to start with as far as getting everything square and the way it's supposed to be. While I'm letting the head surface over there, I'm going to go ahead and regrind all of the valves. And these are brand new valves, so coming from the factory, they should be good out of the box. That being said, I mean, when we had them over on the machine when I was showing earlier in the video, um, doing our vacuum checks, we saw that they were all holding vacuum, so theoretically everything is good. But we recently purchased this new Robbins VR10P valve grinder back in January of this year. So it's only about a year old. We've probably ground less than a thousand valves on this machine. So I know from experience that our machine is probably gonna do a better job than any machine in a factory that has you know, done probably a thousand valves in a day versus our machine that still is basically brand new and has ground less than a thousand valves. So. I'm going to go ahead and I've put some color on these valves so that we can see when we, you know, chuck them up in the grinder, we'll be able to see if they were ground well or, you know, if maybe we are actually fixing um, maybe a grinding error. With the Engine Pro valves, I've been having really, really good luck lately. Um, you know, out of a whole set of valves, I'll maybe have one or two that were a little bit off. And there, it's not enough that it would ever cause problems, but it's just something that I like to do to make them perfect. There are some brands of valves out there that when you put a brand new valve in the valve grinder and start grinding, every single one in the box is going to be off. Um, Engine Pro is not that way. These are a really nice quality valve for the price. Um, and we've been really happy with them. We use them a lot. We sell a ton of them and we have really good luck with them. But like I said, we'll go ahead and do that just to double check and make sure that everything's perfect before we assemble these heads. Now, before I grind these, I'm actually gonna dress the wheel. So we've got a diamond dress dresser here. They were just barely going across that. In this case, I just wanna make sure that we're as good as we can be. Get that back out of the way. Let's get a valve in here. You can see it just took hardly anything at all to clean that valve up. I'm guessing by how, much, how well that cleaned up, I probably wouldn't have to do this at all. Now I'm gonna do the same thing here on the exhaust valves just to make sure that they're good to go as well.
So there I've just barely touched and just a tiny bit more and it's clean. That, that valve was already pretty much perfect. Now I know it's perfect. Um, so I'm gonna guess that most of the exhausts are gonna be the same way and maybe it was a waste of time to grind them, but at least I know they're perfect. I'd rather do it now and know ahead of time versus putting the head together and finding out that one of the valves isn't sealing and then trying to you know go down the rabbit hole of figuring out what might be wrong with it. It's easiest to just make sure everything is perfect before I put it together. Um, that's the quickest and safest way to know that um, you know everything's going to work out when I assemble this head. So here we've got the intake side cleaned up. Um, there's just a few spots that aren't clean but as you can see again those are going to be well within where the gasket seals, so we're good to go. Got the first head set up, fixtured on the surfacing machine so that we can surface the head gasket surface. And what this is going to do with this fixture I have is make sure that we get this head gasket surface perfectly uh, at a 90 degree angle to the intake surface that we have just recently cleaned up. And the last time this was surfaced, they left a really rough finish. I mean, I can catch my fingernail on that as I go over it. So that's what we want to avoid. So here I've just skimmed the top of the head. Well, bottom technically. Um, and we've got this edge all the way cleaned up and it's all the way cleaned up across here. We've just got some, you know, rough marks from the last guy who surfaced it and you know this one corner that didn't clean up so i'm gonna take a couple more passes and we'll be good to go so here we've got a total of five thousandths taken off this head and we've got a real nice surface here now um, that we're confident is gonna hold that head gasket so on the second head i've got two and a half off of it and it's pretty well cleaned up with the exception of this corner. And I can see looking at the surface of it, um, I'm assuming this was done on a machine not as stout as this one. Um, and the corner is just a little bit lower. So we're gonna go ahead and finish that up. So same thing on this head. Now I'm sitting at five thousandths off the surface and everything is cleaned up except one little spot over here but it's well outside anything that needs to seal. So we're gonna go ahead and call it good at that. So I've got the heads in the spray cabinet right now doing the final wash and I'm gonna get them out, rinse them out, uh, blow them off, and then we'll go over here and I've got everything laid out. We've got our brand new engine pro valves. We've got some positive valve stem seals, all brand new keepers, brand new engine pro springs, as well as the OEM uh, retainers. look before we get these assembled. So now we've got everything clean and ready for assembly and we're going to get these things put back together. So we put assembly lube on all of the valves obviously going together. So now I'm installing our positive valve stem seals. I'm just using this to press them down on and a little bit of lacquer thinner to make them slide on easily.
So we've got our heads assembled. Like I said, all new springs, all new valves, resurface three different surfaces, all new intake seats, all new exhaust seats. Let's uh, let's get them over here by the 30 and we'll do a vacuum check and make sure our valves are all sealing. All right, let's see what they'll do. Start with the exhaust. And when I turn this off, that gauge is just gonna hold. That's absolutely perfect. So I've got it here. It's on this exhaust valve right here. And I've turned this off at this point. So that gauge would be going down if it was leaking at all. And you can see it's absolutely not leaking. Same thing. That one leaks down just barely, but I'm assuming it's because it's coming out the crossover passage where my hand is. And I don't have a perfect seal on that. As you can see, if I kind of let it <laughs> suck the fat of my hand into it, now it's perfect. Beautiful. Let's check the intake. Perfect. Just for fun to show you guys, when I put this on here, there's how quick the gauge comes up. If it was leaking, it would take a, the gauge a little while to get to that max point. And I know for a perfect valve here, if it pulls about 7.8, I know that my valve is cut perfectly. And you can see when I turn it down, there is almost nothing leaking out of that valve. And that's how they all are. It's the most satisfying sound. Doing the same check on the other head here, and it's the same way when I turn the vacuum off, that gauge, you know, it's, it's holding perfectly. These are perfectly cut seats, perfectly cut valves. Um, everything about them is coming out perfect. So just for fun here, I wanted to show you guys that our tips of the valves are all at the same, same length here, um, well within reason, meaning, you know, our, our seats are all cut to the same depth and our valves are all the same length. And the reason we're concerned about this on this engine is because this engine does not have, um, it's a non-adjustable valve train. And by making sure that everything is within the correct specification and all the same, um, we're making sure that, you know, our hydraulic lifter is going to be well within its operating range and we're not going to have any issues since we don't have an adjustable valve train. Now on this head, we're even closer. On the other head, we might have had a couple valves with maybe a few thousands variation. On this head, I would say they are, I mean, they're dang near perfect. All right, everybody, we've got these heads finished up. I wanna thank you all for watching. I hope you found it entertaining and informative, hopefully, and kinda of got an inside look of what we would do on a set of FE Ford heads for just a stock rebuild. Um, like I said, nothing here was done for performance gains or anything like that. It was just rebuilding these heads to factory specifications so that they'll, you know, live a whole nother life on a basically stock rebuild that we're doing. Um, these came out super nice. You know, we've got all three uh, sealing surfaces of the head resurfaced. We've got all new valves, all new springs. We've got new seats to get the valves back up in the head where they're supposed to be. Um, and yeah, these, these just came out super nice. So if you've got any questions, drop a comment below. I try to read all of them, but you know, sometimes I don't get to them all. Um, but you know, if you send me a message on Instagram, um, it's linked in our, uh, it'll be linked in the description of this video. That's where I usually get back the quickest. Um, but yeah, stay tuned for more. Um, I post a lot on TikTok, a lot on Instagram. I'm going to try to get into doing the YouTube videos more often, but they take a lot more work and they're a lot more time consuming for me. Um, so show me that you enjoyed it. I'll have a little more motivation to try and get these cranked out for you guys a little more often and do some more interesting things. So thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.